Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing here, giving you a personal prediction for Maurice Brady's versus Jaya Opataya. And as always, this is just my take. Of course, your prediction can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all. This is a pretty fascinating, interesting fight, so definitely love to hear your picks down there in the comments. A little bit of fight info here. We have Maurice Brady's versus Jaya Opataya taking place at the Gold Coast Convention Center, spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. I don't know why, but I do hate that. In Queensland, Australia, this will be airing on Sky Sports, I believe, on the other side of the pond. And it is for the Ring Magazine and IBF Cruiserweight titles currently possessed by Bradis. Now, this is a very interesting one for me. you got a world championship on the line with a long-reigning titleist against a rising up-and-comer. That's always kind of interesting in general. However, the champ is a little bit long in the tooth, and the new guy is relatively untested at the top level, but has some pretty decent skills, so it makes it all the more interesting. Such an interesting clash indeed, just in that respect of loan. Then you add in that both have styles that would seem to mesh well with each other, with Brady's a heavy-handed volume puncher at times, and Opataya more of a mover that can put together some great combinations. It's just a very compelling fight indeed. So without much more rambling, let's just break this one down. So we're going to start with the champion here. For Brady's to win, I think you want to go for the body. And I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag here. That's going to be the first key for both of them to have some success on the night, but for different reasons. For Brady's, you want to sap some of the energy out of the younger fighter's legs. So Patai is going to be looking to move and to box and to try to circle at times. You're going to want to take some of the speed away from him too. And a great way to do that is by attacking the body. He has a pretty high guard when he gets inside and can be hard to hit sometimes. So when he can get in there a little bit, underneath that guard or behind that guard and then start tacking the body and hitting those hooks pretty hard i think he can have some decent success on the night i would also say land the left right that seems again pretty simple but you have to keep it relatively simple against a guy who's you know good quick mover who's also a southpaw that left right combination can do a lot of things you know you line him up for that right hand which can be that sort of southpaw killer with that left hook and you're going to have some great success what's more just landing a good left hook from time to time will also be a great asset for Brady's here and i think he has a decent left hook to begin with so that's going to be something that he's going to have to look to implement in this fight and if he can get Get that going, especially the earlier the better. I think he'll have some decent success and possibly get Sopatai out of there. And finally, don't be a standing target. Brady does not have the quickest feet in the world, but that does not mean that you have to be just a standing stationary target. That's going to spell great trouble for you as Opatai lets those combinations go and then gets out of the way before you can really cut him off properly. You're going to be more chasing, if anything else. You don't want to do that. Instead, what you're going to want to look to do is at least get the head moving a little bit more, kind of give him some angles, don't square up so much. Just give yourself the best chance to not be just completely blitzed all the time while you're getting inside and trying to do your work. Now, for Opataya to win, I want to say again, go for the body. But this is for a different reason. You're going up there against a fighter who is an older man who, you know, maybe at the kind of tail end of his career, you're going to want to make sure that you test to see just how much reserves he has left in the tank. You're going to want to try to attack the body. And again, Opataya can put some good combos together, and he's just going to have to be able to do that with some body shots, in my opinion, to have some success. You don't want to trade too much. You don't want to leave yourself super exposed to those shots over the top, but you want to make sure that you're at least putting yourself in a position where you're taking some of the reserves out of the tank, tiring him so you can exploit it later in the fight. And I would also say very simply here, pump out the jab. That's going to be your key weapon to getting everything started. It's going to allow for you to try to work the body if you're blinding him well enough. It's going to allow for you to get those combinations off, give you space. It's going to allow for you to make sure you're having the proper distance. It does everything for you as the boxer and the mover here. Of course, it's going to be what you need to get going on the night. But more than anything, you just need to keep it consistent and keep it busy. Don't just do it to get some success and then start going wild. Continue to use it. It will pay dividends, and that's what you're looking for if you're Opataya, so why would you abandon it, keep it going, and pump it out as the night continues? And finally, I would say get around the guard. What I mean by that specifically is you're going to want to use some hooks from time to time. You're going to want to potentially pull that guard down and try to land that left hand specifically as a southpaw. You're going to want to make sure that you're trying to find ways to break that guard and neutralize it. And those are going to be kind of key ways. Another way, of course, is to attack that body will naturally lower the guard. But you're going to have to find your way around that guard because it is a very high one from 
Brady, which is pretty responsible, all things considered, because he's not known as a defensive fighter, but when that guard is up, he can be a harder target to hit than you'd expect, so you're going to have to implement some of those tricks and some of those fast hand movements to try to get around that and land some successful shots. And the more and more I think about this fight, the more I'm edging towards the upset in Jaya Opatia. In my opinion, which could come up way off here, I think Jaya is capable of kind of catching Brady's here at the right age at just the right time here. Brady's is 37 years of age and could be ripe for the picking. He really could at this point. I got to preface this by saying I could be a year or so wrong on this one and I could, you know, just get this one completely flat wrong. But skill-wise, I'd still get Opatai a chance in this fight regardless. The movement and hand speed of Opatai needs to be on display and I think it will be. And the more he starts it off with the jab, the better. Well, Brady's will always have a puncher's chance and the skill to go with it that's underrated. I think Obatai will have done enough with combinations and angles in the first half of the fight to be able to play it safer in the second half and close it out, especially considering they are in Obatai's backyard. I think almost any close decision goes to him anyway, which I think could play a role potentially in this and how they both fight as well. So with all of that being said, my pick is Jaya Obatai via close unanimous decision. Now, the betting odds for this fight have Brady says a pretty sizable favorite here at a minus 400, a 4 to 1 favorite with Opatia coming in as a 3 to 1 dog, a plus 300. So you have some pretty strict lines in terms of I don't think there's a great deal of value in Brady's here. He's just too much of an older fighter with slower hands facing a young fighter. You might completely disagree with me, but I just don't find the value in there. From an Opatai perspective, I see that as a pretty reasonable bet. I would make a small to medium-sized one here, in my opinion, just based on who I think is going to win this fight. Again, could go either way, but it'd be something that I'd look into anyway. And so, there are your odds. In any event, my prediction record as of 6-24-2022 is 26-0 with 5 exact. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth. Especially about this when you got some decent odds. And I think it's a pretty underrated fight that's not being talked about a lot. So it's certainly something I'd like to hear. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcalderon underscore J-O-B. You can email me at jgonboxing at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you there. Also be sure to check out jgonboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, and more. Just updated that so it's a nice big list of fights you can check out there. Of course, be sure to check out my fighter grade series coming out later this week. And as always, until next time.